kick things off with our favorite segment of the podcast, the three stars of the week. Three stars. <laughs> so uh, yeah, for this, for this, uh, we typically I'll, I'll kick things off here um, for my third star of. So this is really like the past seven days. My third star I'm giving to Jean Gabriel Peugeot. Uh, he was a big part of the Islanders uh, coming in, um, taking care of business over these past couple of games. Uh, they had had some trouble scoring so before this. So he came in, got five goals and assists in over a four game span. I don't think any of them were game winners, but uh, there was a two goal game at least twice. So I'm giving it to him as my third star of the week. Um, for me, number two, uh, kind of surprised, uh, didn't think he would, he's kind of under the radar, one of those players that you don't really appreciate until he's on your team. Jordan Stahl, five goals in four games, um, Carolina, top of the division, so I think he's one of those depth players that's really showing in the depth of Carolina, and I just wanted to give it to him. Um, mm-hmm. Had some impact goals on uh, some close games, and he had a big goal uh, yesterday's game where they ended up losing, but they can't. Oh, wait. I said they are top of the division, but if they lost yesterday, that means Florida's top of the division. So, yes, actually, that's true because yep. Florida beat them. Yeah. Yep. yep. Florida's top of the division. Which, but, wait, didn't somebody call that? Uh, it's all lies. Too many postpones. We're not gonna. We're not gonna get into that. But, I know. I know. <laughs> but but for my first star of the week, we gave him the shun last week. Um, said some things. He, we gave him honorable mention this week, last week. Jonathan Huberdeau. Two weeks now. He's uh put up 13 points over the past two weeks. Florida's on a roll. They're top of the division. <laughs> and uh, I'm just giving it to him. Um, what can you say? He's basically getting a point a day and. Some of those days he's not even playing, so mm-hmm. I'm giving my top marks to him. And all, overall, the Florida Panthers are—they're definitely the hottest team, uh, running mm-hmm. good right now. Mm-hmm. And it's—it's—it's it's, it's intriguing and interesting to watch what's happening with their goalie situation. Yeah. Um, because game by game, it seems like Dreger or Dredger—I don't know how to actually say it properly. I think it's Dredger. Um, he's a bigger guy. He's calmer in the net he doesn't lose his net as much i don't i can't comment on the puck handling but i believe that he's better than bobrovsky so all those components as your goalie with a team that is let's call it surprising a lot of people yeah um i I think it's an interesting situation to watch and moving forward i i don't know anymore what they're gonna do Mm -hmm. and maybe florida looks at at potentially trading bobrovsky for another one of those immovable contracts like maybe san jose and florida hook up on a deal eric carlson for bobrovsky yeah who knows it, it'll be interesting what that what they do and like you said dredger dreger uh they've been going to him uh this week mm-hmm. specifically i think he played back-to-back games and then they have a back-to-back i wouldn't read into games. that too much no? because that's what florida's been doing quenville likes to do that okay he doesn't like where he just puts a goalie in for one game so a lot of times whether it's three and then two or four and then two five and two whatever he, t- he likes to give his guys that aren't a chance clearly to his backups going yeah yeah just go bang bang unless it's a back-to-back or something right so mm-hmm. uh, i think that's the third time already this year that dredgers got two games in a row yeah so i don't at this point i don't really read into it however you know moving forward how would that pattern changes i think we'll see something change um but the two games in a row i don't think is much to read into okay sorry i thought i had a panic attack for a second there uh Something completely fantasy Why is related. That? It's fantasy related. I'll, oh, okay. I'll, I'll tell you after. Let's finish these three stars up. Okay. Perfect. So speaking of Dredger, that's actually who... Uh, oh, wait. No, I don't want to skip my third star. I thought that's who I had as three. Um, I actually have Ilya Sorokin as third star. Um, I'm not going to lie. I kind of struggled because I went to go pick the stars and I kind of had them. And then I saw who you had. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you touched on a, got a lot of good points. Uh Pajo, as usual, slows, starts a little slow, and then all of a sudden just comes on ridiculously hot, and then will settle into his spot. Excuse me, Jordan Stahl is really a bit of a unicorn player um, yeah. because he's one of those guys he can do everything, and he can even drop the gloves. And I think this year specifically, where he kind of is that two and a half center, but sometimes two, sometimes three center, 
I think it really comes in handy because he can win you faceoffs. He can be that shutdown centerman. And you know what? If somebody's being a nuisance, he can also drop the gloves and kind of put them in their place for the most part. Um, I know I'm kind of doubling on your stars a little bit, but I just wanted to touch on those no, two it's guys. All good. I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up because, like, I did look at goalies at a tough time. So I, I know you like to look at mine and then make kind of – because so we don't have the same one. So I, I always mm-hmm. get the benefit of going first. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So, and then you tend to come in and kind of give the goalies the props they need. Um, for me, mm-hmm. goalies, it's, it was hard this week for me because most of them had two games at best. Yeah. Yeah, it was hard. And this week there was really only a small, there was really only four or five names to pick from. Mm-hmm. And when I picked Sorokin, I was stretching a little bit. If he didn't get the shutout, I don't know who I would have picked. Um, just because he had the shutout, he had a really good game. I was watching the game. He made five or six really nice saves and like, He's clearly an acrobatic goalie, and he's – he's. you know how in baseball, not to jump out of sports here, but you know how in baseball there's guys, you know, that have a little bit more swag? Yeah. Other sport just has a little bit more swag coming up with his batters, with his pitchers, whatever. He brings a bit of that to the Islanders, and I think it's good for them because for a market like the Islanders who are maybe struggling a little bit for attention or they don't have a marquee player, I think it's a draw factor – for somebody to come in and be like, hey, catch up, like catch this goalie. Like he's entertaining to watch yeah. and he's good. So yeah. it's it's I, I don't know. I, around him coming in too. Absolutely. He's won I think he's won like three I think it's called Gargarian Cups. So championship in, in Russia. Okay. I think he's been the MVP a couple times. Like he's he's legit. I mean, the one thing with me and a lot of people that overlook or where the hype has to be reined in on goalies is specifically from Europe, is that goalies 99 percent of them are taught basically from their net out like that they, they have to have their net and then they use angles so when you come out you know the certain angle based on where your chest is pointing and what you're looking at you come yeah. over from europe and you come to north america the rink's smaller so that fraction of a difference of being like oh is my sh-? no it's, it's slightly changed like usually i'm towards my bench like Okay, I know if I'm looking at my coach, I've got my angle. But then now maybe the coach is six feet further down, and then he's off that half inch. Meanwhile, there's space here, but he thinks in his mind, I've got my angle. Yeah. So there's that adjustment phase of knowing. Like I don't think it's necessarily reference points that they use as angles. I'm just using that to try and illustrate the photo or the, the, the of what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, but with, with that being said, I think it's way more challenging because of that for goalies to come over and be successful right off the hop. Um, so it's it's interesting to see that he's come along slowly, but he's starting to get his angles. You can see they're still not there entirely, which leads to him being out of position, but then he's athletic enough and understands the game enough that he can get a limb there, which okay. is why it's so entertaining. So I think he's going to be a goalie to watch, and I think that's why Varlamov is having the season he is so far is because he knows, like, this kid's good. Yeah. Like, I don't want to have my spot taken from me again. So like I I got to I got to play good and either get traded out of here so I keep playing or like I don't want this kid taking my spot, right? He knows. Totally, he knows yeah. it's legit. Yeah. Um but yeah, so that's why I would go third star for him. Second star, we go back to Florida there, Dredger. Uh, he's 2 and 0, one one win against Tampa and one win against Carolina. So I believe that's 2 and 3 in the division, I believe. Um, so winning against your two top competitors is pretty big, yep. especially when uh, Bobrovsky led in, I think it was six against Tampa the night before or the game before. Uh, he came in and kind of stabilized the force a little bit. And uh, there was some interesting quotes. I don't have them off the top uh, of my head or anything, but uh, they were just basically asking Quenville about the uh, the coach, about the goal sending situation. Yeah. And he basically said that he he – insinuated that money isn't going to be what dictates who gets and starts. So reading between the lines, he's basically saying, Bobrovsky, get your shit together. Cause like, I'm not going to play you just cause you make seven, eight, whatever. Yeah, that, eight realistically, eight. that's how it should be. Oh yeah. And that's, that's just feeding into this whole belief that there's no point committing to goalies because really long term what goalie has outplayed his contract in the cap era? I don't know if there's been one. Yeah. Even Carey Price, he hasn't outperformed his contract. Maybe he's performed up to it when he's been his Vesna candidate, 
and when he got the contract but like he, he i would argue that he's not out yeah usually like in theory like you got to look for the goalies that are on the like backup level or like their first contract they're going they're going to outperform it but when it comes time for them to sign their first real contract then most of the time like you said it's hard it's hard to live up past it but i think i think that the like if i had to project forward i what i see the nhl going with is this is the start we're seeing it right now with this whole platoon thing yeah like it's being forced because the cadet the schedule and with all, all the COVID stuff and everything it's being forced a little bit um you but it's not gonna stop like before COVID even yeah yeah exactly and like it, it's definitely going there because like sports science it tells us this it's the same it it's the exact same reason why starting pitchers don't go nine innings anymore or why a lot of batters get taken out in the seventh inning for other people it's just science sports science numbers yeah. saying that you'll save injury they'll perform better they'll be fresher whatever it is you're targeting it's almost always going to turn up more positive if you have a platoon mm -hmm. plus if you think about it and you're like can't okay, putting 90% of my eggs in this basket and that basket has a bad season or gets hurt or gets COVID and can't play or gets some sort of other illness or something that can't play. Look at like a John Tavares or something like that. Or sorry, um, a Jonathan Taze uh, who is just not playing right now because of other medical issues. Yeah. Um, you never know. Right. And I think it's bad. I think it's bad for the sport because a lot of players don't want to be goalies. And a lot of young people playing hockey, most people can't afford to play hockey these days, let alone get goalie equipment to grow up with. Like you need six sets of pads probably yeah, between where you start and whatever. That's that's ten thousand dollars minimum. It's and definitely we're not a playing big, we're talking big investment early commitment. on. Yeah, oh, big 100%. commitment. Yeah. yeah and and that's the thing is that like a lot of goalies, if it goes that way and they're like, well, unless I'm the elite of the elite of the elite, my best case situation is a platoon. Well, if I'm a platoon goalie, nobody's going to be getting seven plus million anymore. It'll yeah. be five, six million. So the money isn't going to be to be made in the goalie position within hockey, which will not drive more yeah. kids to want to be goalies, yeah. which then could create poor prospect pool or player pool of goalies which then we could see a shift in the skill of the game yeah. skill even though it's just more goals going in because of and then do you change the size of the puck or the size you know what yeah, you know what i mean you get into these all these other conversations ripple effect that what, what yeah so yeah that's the one thing that makes me a bit nervous about the whole goaltending thing um with platoons but i mean that being said obviously i gotta Give the recognition to Dredger, and I, I do think he's going to take the net uh, from Bobrovsky, and I don't know what they're going to do. I know I mentioned that randomly there Carlson for um, uh, Carlson for Bobrovsky, but like pick yeah, any team that has a be anyone, monstrous yeah. contract, right? Um, but I, I, I think that's the only solution, and maybe solution for multiple teams, but we'll see. Um, but moving to the first star for me is uh, Cam Atkinson from uh, Columbus. Yeah, consider him. Good pick. Excuse me. Yeah, he had three goals, four assists, and I believe three games, maybe four games. I can't remember yeah. um, what the number was off the top of my head, but either way. Uh, he also had 15 shots on goal, was which was tied for the league lead uh, over the last seven days. So uh, I know he's playing on the top line right now with Roslovic and Laine. Yeah. Um, so I, I was waiting to see if it was him or Bjorkstrand to get that spot moving forward, and it looks like Atkinson might, got, might have got that position, so... I mean, he might be kind of just as ready to boom here for a few weeks, few games, however you want to say it, as Peugeot is, um, just because of what's going on. Uh, but, yeah, that's yeah, my first. It's interesting third how star. he's popped off a little bit now that he's playing with Lonnie. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe it's just that extra space he has. They're not draping over him as being the, the, the big forward on that line like because now they have all these other guys to contend to. And even Roslovich has he's had a big performance since he's come to – there and Columbus says I think uh that they're, they continue to roll and they're they're going to be a threat they're definitely a much bigger threat than I gave them credit for at the beginning of the season mm -hmm. and the good thing about Roslovic specifically with Columbus is he's an Ohio boy yep, he grew up a Columbus fan yep which it's it's kind of weird saying that now that Columbus has been around long enough <laughs> for kids to have come through the system to say they grew up Columbus fans it's kind of weird yeah um but yeah 
Yeah. All right. That's awesome. And that concludes our three-star segment of the, the week. The three stars. Now you know. <laughs>